Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Such a great honor to have you here today with our weekly I Believe Ministries Bible Studies. And I pray that something is said today that blesses you in your walk with Christ and blesses you in, <clears throat> in your everyday life. And it develops something in you that manifests into something great into the world and that glorifies God more than anything. I can't say enough how thankful I am to have you here and wish and pray that you are continually blessed through his word. Here's where we uplift the name of God. We magnify his word for the purpose of strengthening his people and understanding his will through his word. We have been studying on the foundation of faith. And we have been studying characters in the Bible that displayed great faith. We don't have enough Bible studies and time enough to talk about everyone who displayed great faith in the Bible. But we did take the time to bring out but a few that did display great faith. And those few, Abraham, we talked about Abraham, and we talked about Noah, and we talked about Elijah. Each and every one of those characters displayed great faith. And the Lord counted to them as righteousness. And I think the Spirit guided me to those characters for the simple fact that those characters did not display any great talent to do great things. The only talent that they had was that they believed God and they obeyed what they believed. They lived according to what they believed. And the Lord did it for them. That which he had promised. Now that is faith. And that should be encouraging to us, to those who are talented and maybe those who are not, you know, have a particular talent in a certain area or something. It isn't about the talent, physical gifts that determines whether the God can use you to do great things and to do mighty things. No, it is what you believe. It is where is your faith and who is your faith in? And that kind of brings us to our lesson title tonight. Be true. Be true. And our lesson titles comes from Romans three and four. Not the entire verse of Romans three and four, but a snippet, we're just gonna pull a particular phrase out of the verse. Okay, let's see, get this screen turn. All right, we're gonna get, let's see. In just a second to get everything together here. All right, as you see, be true. Romans three and four. And again, it's not the entire verse, but just a snippet of the verse. And this is kind of going to tighten up. This is going to allow us to apply what we learn about faith. See, it's good to learn things, but we haven't, we haven't truly learned it until we are able to apply it. Anybody who's worked in the uh, field of education know that there are higher order thinking skills. And, and you, 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 you don't truly grasp anything just by recalling it, uh, all right? So in the aspect of you can tell me uh, what's five plus five, but can you show me? Anybody can memorize five plus five equal 10, but the ability to apply what five plus five is, is a higher order thinking skill. And that is the ability to live out what you know, to show what you know. And in our ability 
to, in our learning about faith, we want to be able to apply it to our life. And our lesson title today, our verse today is, will equip us, equip or further equip us to be able to apply faith in our lives because we live so far beyond, below our means when we do not live a life of faith. And what we see is when we're not living a life of faith, then we're living a life of sin. Anything that we do that's not done in faith is a sin. That's what God tells us in his word. So we want to be sure to live a life of faith. So we want to look at our scripture, be true. Be true. Now, Romans 3 and 4, the part that we are going to focus on intently is let God be true but every man a liar. Nine words, but very powerful words in the aspect and the walk that we have in life and in faith. If we look at these nine words, we're kind of pulling them out of a conversation that Paul is having with himself. Now, Paul is having a conversation with himself and he's answering some question that he's asking. And the question that he's asking himself is a question that he's anticipating that the people that will read his letter will ask themselves as they read this letter. And in this part of the letter of uh, Romans, Paul is explaining to the readers and the believers in Rome to not listen to the people who are teaching them things that are contrary to word to the word of God. See, some people were teaching the believers that you had to be a Jew to be saved. Only the Jewish people will be saved. If you, you have to be circumcised to be saved, you have to do all these things to be saved. But Paul is steadily explaining and teaching to the believers that you are saved, not by your works, but by grace. Through faith it is the gift of God. And he wants his people to understand, his believers, he wants us as believers to understand that we must believe God and believe his word and not listen to the words of others and listen to the world. See, that applies. And, and, and Paul will go on to continue to write throughout the book of Romans, explaining why to trust in God, have faith in God. Your salvation comes by believing, not by your works. But we're going to pull these eight words, nine words, out. And we're going to allow these words not only to be sure we understand them in their context, but we also want to be able to allow these words to be applied to our walk in faith because they're so profound. They're so profound and so powerful to us as believers. Because every person that lived by faith, they had this one thing in common. They believed God. Let God be true. They believed what God had to say. And not what man had to say. Abraham believed God when he told him to leave his family and to walk and go to a land that he will show him. And when he gets to that land, he will make him a great nation. He will make him a great nation. A great nation will come through him. He will bless them that bless you, curse those that curse you. He gave him a sevenfold blessing. Abraham left. He was, as we stated, he was born in a family and a nation of idolatrous. And he heard the word of God. And he left everything to follow 
the word of God, contrary to everything that's around him. He listened to God and not the world. We looked at Noah. Noah was a man who lived in a time where there's sin. At this time, God testified that he created, that he created man. He detested man. Everything about man was sinful. Everything they did and everything, even in every part of their heart and their thoughts was sinful. So he gave Noah a word. He called Noah and he told Noah about what was to come. And what did Noah do that made him different than everyone else? He believed God. He let God be true. And in the midst of a fallen world, a sinful world, he built an ark because of God's word. And it did not make sense because he, no one even knew what rain is, was. Never had rain before. This man is building an ark, a big boat, in preparations of some great water that nobody has ever even seen or heard before. But he heard and he did what God say, contrary to everyone around him. And by doing so, he was declared righteous, just as uh, Abraham was declared righteous and they were saved. Abraham family was saved. Noah family was saved. And the Lord counted them as righteous and they did great things. What was the great thing that they did? They believed God. Wasn't that they had the ability to defeat mighty armies? They simply believed and obeyed God. That is faith. See, that is faith. That is where you find your Greatness in God, your purpose in God, right there. Hearing and believing and doing, obeying. You talked about Elijah, a man off the other side of a mountain. No one knew who he was. He walked around with camel skin on. Somebody know he didn't go to no seminary school. He wasn't a part of the, the priests uh, that, that were set up on the great teachers, great Bible scholars. No, he simply heard the word of God and believed it. And he obeyed God and went and told the king, King Ahab, that it was not going to rain until he said so. That didn't take any great talent. What did it take? It took faith and, and obedience and prayer. And it did not rain for the span of three and a half years in Israel until he, the Lord told him when it was going to rain, until the Lord gave permission for it to rain. And we saw in our characters that the Lord did mighty things in faith. Well, let me tell each and every one of you and myself, we all have the potential we all, all have within us, we all have the opportunity to do mighty things through the power of God. And how can we do that? Through faith. Through faith. Let God be true and let every man be a liar. So as we study our lesson text today, having that foundation, now we want to be able to apply the faith that we've been studying to our lives. And in order for us to do that, we have to know, we have to have this ingrained in our head. Let God be true, but every man a liar. That is, is very important because what God, he's, God has a purpose for each and every one of us. He has a purpose for our lives. See, God has a plan. We learn through Jeremiah, through what he taught Jeremiah, that even before we were placed in our, in our mother's womb, the Lord called us. 
He had plans for our lives. He had purposes for our life. He had, he created us for his will. See, we must understand who God is. We must understand who God is. So I want us to look at a profound, a, 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 a great scripture that we can always quote, but we should always remember. And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God. Very familiar scripture, but look as the scripture goes on. To them who are called according to his purpose. What we must understand is God will call us. If we believe in God, if we are saved by God, he has called us. We are one of his, and he has a purpose for our life. He didn't just call us to be saved just to say, hey, I just want to save this brother. You're saved, and then that's it. When we are called into the family of God, he has a plan for our lives. He has created us, built us, shaped us to do his will. And he created us for a purpose. And see, he he knows what it is, what our purpose is. We as believers don't Many times, well, we don't know what his purpose is, but he reveals to us his purpose for our lives. See, he reveals to us his purpose for our lives. And as he reveals his purpose, what must we do? We must believe. See, we must believe. We, 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 we are called for a purpose. See, if he calls us, he will what? He will equip us. If he equips us, he will what? Justify us. If he justifies us, he will glorify us. See, he made us for a particular purpose. We have to understand that. See, that is one of the most simple and fundamental basic things we need to know. He has a purpose for our lives. And we are not living in his purpose. We are not living according to his will. We're living outside of his purpose. We're not living to do what he designed for us to do. See, knowing God's divine purpose for our life is the, one of the greatest assets we can have as a person. See, people who possess their purpose, know their purpose, then guess what? They have power. And God reveals it to you. He reveals it to you. You just have to get out your way and get what you want to do out of off your mind and hear what it is that he wants you to do and accept it. I never forget when I learned that his purpose his true purpose for my life. When, he, when I learned his true purpose for my life was the night, the same day I learned that I had cancer. And then in the midst of that, I realized what my true purpose because I, the only thing I had regretted knowing that I had cancer, the only thing that I literally, I regretted, the only thing that I regretted in my life and, I, and just, it was just a feeling that you, you can't explain because you, you wanted to make it right and you didn't know if you could. And then that made me know that was my purpose because that was what I was here for. It was so plain to me. And that was to preach God's word, to teach God's word, to be a servant in the ministry. That was my purpose. And when I realized that I had my life and I accepted it. My life became complete. Like it was the best feeling in the world. 
I knew my purpose. So for so long, I thought my purpose was through sports and sports. And it was. It served a purpose. All things were to the good of those who love the Lord. He used all that to get me where he wanted me to be. And guess what? He has a purpose on your life. It's things that God wants you to do and wants you to be that you're, if you don't know it, that you're not accepting it because you continue to see what you think it is you, you are to be, what you feel like you, you want it to be. And you, you, you really kind of missing what it is that is purpose for your life. But when you, when you humble yourself and remove all those things and hear what he has and accept it, you will have a peace in your life. You will know what you're here for. And then now you can live your life to serve your purpose. You can live your life in the perfect will of God. You can walk in your calling. That's, that's a wonderful feeling. So, so to them who are called according to his purpose. See, when you walk in your purpose, that's when everything that goes on in your life is going to work to your good. See? Jesus walked in his purpose. You know, he, he often said his purpose was to destroy the works of the, the devil. See? And he says, I have come that you may have what? Life and have life more abundantly. Jesus knew his purpose. And we as believers must know our purpose. And once we understand our purpose, our whole life, everything that goes on in our life is going to work toward us fulfilling the purpose God has in our life. But we have to trust him. We have to trust him. And we all must understand we have a purpose. We weren't just born just to say we're born and just say, hey, we're my life is to do whatever I want to do, how I want to do it, what I feel is good. No. We must understand that we God created us for his glory. See, this is the foundation we must stand on because at this point in time, time this is where our faith becomes to be activated because now we are believing God to bring the past that what he has promised in our life. That's faith. And now everything in the world going to move according to serve that purpose, all things was begin to work together for the good of them that love the Lord. Those people who put you down or try to hold you back or do things to keep you, block you, keep you from where he wants you to go. Guess what? God going to use that to guide you right on into your purpose. Just think the people when they were killing Jesus. Oh, we got him now. We finna kill him. We strung him, strung him up on the cross, nailed him to the cross, hung him on. Oh, they thought they were doing good, but all they were doing working. <laughs> God was using that <laughs> for his purpose. See, and he, he would do the same for us. But what we also must understand is the Lord declares the end from the beginning. That's a powerful thing about our Lord and Savior. If we look at Isaiah 46, 9 and 10, it says, Remember the former things, those of long ago. I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. I make known, I make known the end from the beginning. I make known the end from the beginning. From ancient times, what is still to come, I say, my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. The Lord has told us, see, we, he knows the ending from the beginning. So when God does things, he already knows how what the end is going to be. Like He already has prepared the ending. Now he's going back, see, and orchestrating our life to get to what the, the ending is going to be like. If you look at the movie, i give you a prime example. If you look at the movie industries, when people make movies they always shoot the movie the end first 
they always shoot the end of the movie first. You would think that they would shoot the beginning, then the next part, then the next scene, then the next scene, the next scene to the end. They do it quite the opposite. They shoot the end first. And then they shoot the rest of the movie to, to come to that end and conclusion. See, and that's the way the Lord works in our life. See, he knows the ending from the beginning. See, God knows that you and I are going to make it. See, he knows that we're going to make it. How do he know that we are going to make it? Because he is the creator. He is the creator. He's already put the victory in the heavens. He's already got the story written. He always got that we are, we'll be successful and we will be this already in history. We just hadn't lived up to it yet. It's already in the heavens what we're going to be and how we're going to be and what we're going to do. And then the Lord goes and he makes sure everything is set according to the design he has for our life. He works his purpose and his plan for his life. He, he molds and shapes our will to be his will. See, he knows what the end is going to be. And what you're going through is working to your good. So we shouldn't wonder where we're going, whether or not we're going to make it. We should know that we are going to make it. Because, see, what we got to understand is what God says, it happens. He is the creator of this world. Let there be light. There was light. See, everything he speaks, it happens. God is not a man that he should lie. If he said it, then it's going to come to pass. When the Lord say things, it's going to come to pass. Now, continue to place all these things in your in your spirit and your heart and learn from it because this is helping this will help you understand how to live a life even more faithful than you may be living right now he knows the end from the beginning you see the victory has already been won see it's already been been won So we don't need to be wondering where we're going to make. We're going to make, if we don't quit, if you don't quit, you're going to make it. See, what we must do is not quit. Continue to keep our hope and our trust in the Lord because his will will come to pass. Even if everything that you see around you doesn't look like it. God's going to work all things. Just know that all these things that are looking the total opposite of what you think, is the, what the God told you, is going to work its way into being what he would call it to be. And see, by God knowing the beginning from the end, he is, as I said, a creator. And he created us. He is, when, when, when you create something, when you build something, when you make something, you create something, you have to draw out the design. And see, that's what the Lord did with us. He designed us to accomplish his purpose. He was the architect. So when he created us, he created us, me and you, to fulfill the purpose that he built us for. So we have everything we need within us to be everything that he has called us to be. Everything we have within us. So if somebody take their friendship away from you, somebody take your job away from you, somebody take whatever they can, your money, whatever, your name, whatever, they can take it away, but they cannot take See, you still have everything you need to fulfill his purpose for your life. You still have it. Because he, is our, he, he designed us to do his purpose for, our, for his purpose, for the purpose of our life. So he's the architect. Now, he's not only, he is, so he knows what we made of. He knows what we built out of because he designed us. He put a blueprint for us and he created us according to that blueprint. Now he's also the master builder. He built he build us, he built us according to the plans that he has 
for our life. So he architect, he, he designed us, and then he created us, he built us to fulfill his purpose for our lives. See, now all of a sudden we should start feeling like me being what he has called me to be is should give us a little bit more courage and strength to, to continue to believe and to do it because I know God created me. He designed me to fulfill this purpose, my purpose for what he called me to do. He designed it as the architect and he built me to be able to do what it is he called me to do. He did it. We're talking about the same God that hung the stars and the planets in the sky, that they rotate and revolve by a rhythm and a timing that they never collide and that they keep everything in, in motion and in place through time. We're talking about that God. So we can be sure that he created us and we are the crowning achievement of his creation. He built us in the likeness of him. So we are creators, we are builders, we have what we need. He, he breathed the breath of life in us. He gave us life, he designed us. But what we have to do is continue, we must believe in what he has designed. Second Corinthians four and seven tell us, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God, not us. So we're gonna trust God and what he has and what he has given us to do what it is he has called us to do. See, we must do it. We must have an understanding and know that we can we, we are able to do it because God created us. He has given us what we need. And, he, and, and we got to understand when God created this world, he he just didn't create like uh, haphazardly or this. He created with beauty and honor. So we must understand that God is not just building any kind of house when he's talking about us. God is building a house of glory, a house filled with his spirit, governed by his word, and submitted to the lordship of his son, Jesus Christ. Glory, hallelujah. So we know that what we are made of. See, we know that what we're made of, who made us and, and what we're made of. We know that we were made to fulfill and create to fulfill his purpose, designed to fulfill his purpose for our life. Now that we know how we are created and we know what we are created for, now it's time to put it to work, to do what it is designed to do. So we must have a direction. We must have a vision. Simon said, where there is no vision, the people perish. Whew. Powerful scripture. Because when you walk in faith, see, when you walk in faith, many times you have a vision of what God wants you to be. He, he shows you a vision of what it is he wants you to be. But the hard part about it, the, the part that, that, that makes it a little difficult he doesn't tell you how you're going to be. It. And then the vision that he shows you is totally opposite <laughs> how you see yourself. The man, he, he, he put thoughts and, and, and ideas in my mind, just little subtle thoughts and, 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 and kind of hints about preaching long ago in my life. But I couldn't really feel that that was he would tell me because how I was living my life. No, he ain't talking about I'm finna preach. How I'm living my life right now, how I enjoy doing what I'm doing. I know he ain't having <laughs> you know, the whole time. So I couldn't really see. I'm like, no, that just something in my, you know, I don't know why that keep popping in my head every blue moon. I guess shoot. I don't know about that. So I could never see. I could never really understand what it is he was trying to show me, but he gave me that bitch but I couldn't really see it because I kept looking at myself and what I like to do. But see, that is where many people are and they lose their train of thought. They miss what God is trying to, their purpose in life because they keep looking at what they think they are. Whew, what a word right there. 
They keep looking at what they think they are. See, a person is lost without direction. You, 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 you try anything. I try to be a sailor today. And the next day, well, I think I want to be an architect. Well, you know, I don't know about that. I think I want to be a, a mechanic. You know, you just you just go around, then you start just working where they pay the most. Or who had the best benefit? They start working the easiest job. Or you just floating all around. Don't really have a purpose or a direction or intent for your life. See, that's a lack of vision. See, when you don't have a, 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 a vision for what God has for your life, you don't have his insight into the reason for your being here, your reason for your living. And that's tough. The devil has fun with you because you don't know what you are, who you are, and what you're here for. You just try anything. That's why it must be why he said through Paul, through Solomon, without vision, the people what? Perish. Your vision is what gives you motivation to wake up in the morning and gives you direction. See, people with vision that know what God has planned for their life, guess what? When they wake up in the morning, they wake up differently. See, it's two kinds of people. People who, who wake up in the morning and just kind of let the day happen. So they don't know what's going to happen for the day. They're just going to go with it however the day goes. And then there are people who wake up who are going to take control of their day. They're going to plan their day out to, for the best way for them to get to what they want in life. See, that's people with vision. They wake up each and every day uh, walking and going in a direction of where they should be going to serve their purpose. Not live your life haphazardly. See, when you have vision, you, 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 you the, 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 the more clear your vision becomes and your purpose is, the more God starts to show you how it's going to come to pass and what things to do. Just going toward my vision, toward my purpose. It gives, you know, vision gives understanding and it reveals meaning to, to many trials you may experience at any given time. So we want to be people of vision. See, God imparts to you a revelation, his plan for your life. Many times, you know, that vision can be confirmed by, by others. Sometimes, not all the time. And many times, he just continues to speak it and show you in his way like he did to me. But I can go back, and people told me that many times that they saw me being a minister in the middle of all the sin that I was doing. I'm looking like a minister. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know, I laugh at that because I was just enjoying myself and my life and just living far from a person who would want to be a minister. It was so far-fetched in my mind. But look at, look at me now. <laughs> look at far God has brought me. And see, and if you try to figure out the fulfillment of his prophecy on your life, by looking at your situation or your circumstances or your condition, it's going to be hard, like I said, for you to believe. It's going to be impossible for you to do without the assurance of faith and the witness of the Holy Spirit. See, what I want you to understand is when he shows you your vision, tells you what it's going to be, it's going to look impossible. You can't do this. I can't do this. But what he said in Zechariah 4 and 6, not by my might, nor by my power, but by the spirit, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. See, you don't have to worry. The, he's going, he's, I, I just told you that he created you for that purpose. And you have, he designed you to do what he has given you a vision to do. He's created you for it. It may not look like it, but he has created you for. What you got to do is have faith in what? Believe. And just say, okay, Lord, you said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to start out by just basically studying the word. 
I don't know how to start. And then maybe I start just praying. Maybe I start teaching Sunday school. I'm just speaking from my perspective. I don't know what, you know. But see, the whole time he prepared me by being a school teacher, by being a coach. The whole time, every day in my life, I was directing. Not so much as being a leader, but being able to um, uh, communicate to people things that needed to be done for success. It's a lot like preaching, being able to communicate God's word for salvation. See, he was prepping me up the whole time, me not knowing what it was. But once I got there, I realized the whole time he was prepping me up for what he was calling me to do. And as you go through things in your life, all things work together for the good of those who love the world. A lot of things that you're doing, you're kind of floating around and you don't really know. But don't worry about it. Just do all the things you can do to fidelity. Fidelity. Do it to the best you can. Learn it. Be the best at it. Because see, that's going to be working. When you figure out your purpose in life, the things that you did in the past <laughs> was preparing you for what it is he called you to do. I taught a, a, a Bible study lesson once. Nothing that you ever do will be wasted. All the things you do in life, you do it to the best of your ability, you do it to, to God, it's going to be preparing you for what it is God is calling you to do. The whole time Moses, God was preparing Moses for what he was calling him to do. He was a shepherd for 40 years in the desert on the other side of a mountain. What God was teaching him how to do was how to lead people in the wilderness. And after 40 years, he called him back to Egypt to lead his people out of slavery. And he was trained and equipped to keep, to survive in the wilderness because he had been doing it for 40 years. See, wow. See, so all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. So let God be true. So that vision that he's showing you that is what God is telling you to be and telling you to do. That is your purpose. But what we have to understand is we have to believe. The word says, let God. So you have a choice. When he shows you and gives you the vision and he tells you and he makes it plain to you what it is that you are called to do, you have to believe it. Let God. You have to believe it. And I've tried my best to get you to understand why you should believe it. Because that's what he created you for. He designed you to do what it is he's calling you to do. You're ready. It may not look like it, but you're ready. Do it. Let God be true. Then the next word is, but. So there's another side to this. The other side is what you're telling yourself and what the world is telling you. Let them be a liar because what you're going to tell yourself is, what? I know he ain't made me be no preacher. <laughs> what? Preacher? No, I'm about to go to the club tonight. <laughs> and I want to lay hands on somebody. I, I mean, you just, just think, I ain't finna, hey, you, you got to call yourself a liar because you're not going to see yourself as what God is calling you to do. And see, the world is not going to define you that way as well. The world is going to define you as what they want you to be. See, the world is going to tell you what, well, you look like you're going to, you know, folks tell you, man, you look like you should be a doctor, you a lawyer, you look like a lot of times, well, you're just a rapist, you just a um, some person, a victim, you just whatever, whatever you've been through in life, that's what the world is going to try to place on you. But see, God. We are better, we are, we, are, we are not what the world has placed on us. And we are not what we have been through in life. Because that's the case, then all of us will know what we will be, sinners. Because we've all sinned. But what we have to remember is 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. If any man in Christ, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? He or she is a what? New creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. See, once we give ourselves to Christ and believe Christ, now what? We are declared righteous. We declare righteous. We are not sinners anymore. 
We are not um, thieves anymore or whoremongers or whatever it was that we could have been doing in our past, liars or whatever. We're not that anymore. Stop calling yourself that. Now you are saved. You are delivered. You are set free. As Independence Day, you are set free from the sins and the things you've done in the past. You are a new creature. Now you have been called for your purpose. You prepared for your purpose in life. Now God is calling you for your purpose. What a wonderful position. Be not have faith and believe. Let God be true. Believe what God says about you. Because now no one is calling you a liar anymore. No one is calling you uh, a thief anymore. But they may still be calling you that, but you're not calling yourself that anymore. See, now we are being called by a new name. Our name is not Jacob anymore. Our name is Israel. Our name is not Abram anymore. You got to realize when Abram was called, see, one thing God does, I'm going to bring it on home, just give me a few minutes. One thing God does, he calls things before they are. But when he calls it, it when, when God calls something, it is. It is. So what we must understand that we are new creatures. Forget about what we've done. Philippians 3, 13 and 14. See, forget about the path, but what? Press toward the mark of what? Your high calling in Christ Jesus. <laughs> See, we got to live toward our high calling in Christ Jesus where he has called us to be. See, now he is calling us what we are to be. And God does it that way. God calls things, calls those things that are not as though they were. Abram, you know what that means? Exalted father. When he called with Abram, then he was exalted father. He wasn't even a father. But that was his name. But God changed his name to Abraham, meaning father of many. This when he had no children. See, God called him a father of many when he had no children. But see, what did Abraham do? He believed. And what happened? What God called him came to pass. See? See, don't put the emphasis on what Abraham, put the emphasis on what God called him. God calls those things that are not as though they were. See, God spoke this world into existence. And when God calls you a architect, a leader, calls you saved, a Christian, guess what? You are. You are. The only way you are not is you don't believe his word. Let God be true. And every man a liar. See, our responsibility is to line up our will with his will. When we do that, our lives become empowered. All of a sudden, now we're standing in positions of power because the grace and the spirit of God will accomplish what he called you to be. Ooh. See, <laughs> see, once you put yourself in that position, everything is going to lie out for you to be what God called you to be. And it would be impossible to be that way in our strength. But guess what? We're doing it because we believe God. We believe God. Mark 9 and 23 tells us, you know, with God, all things are possible. If thou can believe, all things are possible. So stop believing the lies that you tell yourself. And walk by faith. Live your life by faith. What you mean by faith? Live your life to what God has called you. He called you to be this businessman. He called you to be an author. Do you know we got authors in our ministries? People who have wrote books. See, everything, all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. The things that almost took them out of here 
became a blessing to them in the end. It, it developed them into be authors. See, they thought they had them killed, but now they are authors. See, believe what he calling you. Because what he, he knows what the ending from the beginning, what he called you is what you're going to be if you believe. And how are you going to get there? Through faith and obedience. The just shall live by what? Faith. And anything that is not of faith is sin. Whew. When you're not living your life in faith, you're living a life of sin. See, I'm trying to equip you as believers to let you know the power you have in Christ Jesus. We live so far below our means. Our life is such a life that is not it can be as blessed as it could be because we don't walk and live by faith. We live by faith. Believe what God is showing you and obey and watch him bring things to pass. If he called you to it, if he showed you to it, he's going to bring you through it. He brought a man that was 75 with no children to be the the, the father of nations. A man built a boat that he ain't never even seen a boat before. He ain't never even seen rain before. The boat saved his life. This man walked up as a nobody in front of a king and told the king what the Lord said. By faith. And see, when God has called you to be what he's called you to be, live your life to be what he's called you to be. You might not know how. See, they, he didn't know how. Elijah had no clue how the Lord was going to stop him. All you know what the Lord said it wasn't going to rain. So I'm just going to go with what he said. The Lord Joe showed me how to build this boat. I'm just going to build this boat. I'm not gonna even, I don't even know how they're going to be used. He built it. Abraham said, I'm just going to walk. The Lord keep telling me I'm going to have a baby. I'm going to walk where you tell me to go. And I'm just going to figure out how me and Sarah are going to have this baby. Just because we can't figure it out don't mean he can't do it. Just because you can't understand how he's going to make you an architect, an author, or whatever, don't mean he can't do it. He spoke the world into existence. So when he tells you what you are, he, he created you. He made you and designed you to be what he called you to be. So he tell, he, I'm telling you, you are a author. I'm telling you, you are a community activist. I'm telling you, you are a doctor. Well, all I see myself, I barely graduated from high school. I went to Alabama State. I didn't go to Emory. I went to Troy. I didn't go to University of Alabama. How can I be an architect or a political leader or whatever? Because you believe God. <laughs> that's all you got to say because you believe God tell yourself that because I believe God and watch it and, and I'm just going to do what you say to him go where you say go see Hebrew 10 and 14 declares that God offered Christ as the ultimate sacrifice for man's sin and has and it said perfected forever them that are sanctified now the word perfected in this particular passage of scripture means in the Greek that he has completed it. So when he said perfected it, that means he is speaking to the future. So we are perfected in Christ when we believe and obey. We are perfected. There. So what he has called us now is going to be complete. It's going to come to pass. This simply means that the end is already finished. <laughs> and it's going to come to pass by supernatural power, by the grace of God given to us by Christ. See, it's going to come to pass. We are perfected by believing in faith. When we have faith and live according to faith, we are perfected. It's going to come to pass. It's already done. It's already done. So we don't need to worry about it. We just need to live by it. And as I can go, I can keep it so many other things. Listen, 1 John 4 and 4, you are God's little children and have overcome them. 
You have overcome them. Let God be true. Let God be true. See, but every man a liar. You have overcome them because greater is he <laughs> that is in you than he that is in the world. See, we can we know that part so well, but we forget about the first part. You are of God's little children. We are God's children. We are chosen. We are the children of God. We are the children of the most high. You have the Holy Spirit inside of you. See, that's what you have inside you. So you have, and, and that means you have overcome them. You, you will overcome it. Whatever this world gives you. Then he goes on to say, because he is greater, he that's in you is greater than he that's in the world. See, if God is in you, who can be against you? And there's two ways that you can do this. And I'm going to close it out on these two things. Please forgive me and blame the Holy Spirit today for going over, over time. But I'm going to give you these two things and we're going to take it on home. Two things you need to do to live in faith and to apply these things to your life. The first thing is believe in God. Believe in his power and his word. Believe in God. The second thing, believe in you. If God believes in you, listen to me, let God be true, but every man lie, a liar. So if God believes in you, what right do you have not, what right do you have to doubt the ability God has given you? What right do you have to doubt the ability that God has given you? God has invested the blood of Jesus in you, his son. So listen to me, recognize your value just as God recognizes your value. So what do you believe in? Go look at look, look in the mirror. What do you believe about yourself? Do, do you believe you are good enough? Remember, he created you. Think about the things that he did. As a man thinketh, so is he. Mark 9 and 23. If thou can believe, all things are possible. So in Jesus Christ is where sinners are forgiven. Listen, in Jesus Christ is where a hurting heart is healed. See, in Jesus Christ, is where broken families can be healed. Is where broken marriages can be repaired. Is where cowards can become conquerors. Where uh, victims become victors. When losers become winners. And when dreams become reality. In Jesus Christ, all things are possible to believers. Let God be true and every man a liar. And that brings our, son, our, our uh, Bible study to a close. I apologize for my timeliness, but I had to wrap up our month long of studying faith with the lesson that will allow you to apply what you learn and that God's blessing and power will manifest itself in your life. And you will be all that he has purposed for you to be. And I pray that it bless your life and your walk with Christ. Thank you so much for your time. And I pray God's blessing you over your life. Let's, let's end our lesson with the prayer. Dear Lord, we come to you today, Lord, thanking you for your grace and mercy. Lord, we come to you today asking for forgiveness for our sins. Lord, we come to you today, Lord, asking you to fill us with your spirit. Lord, give us your vision so that we may see your purpose for our lives and that we may, and now we are equipped to walk in that purpose, that vision that you've given us, Lord. And I pray that these things come to pass in each and every one of our lives, dear Lord. And I pray, Lord, for healing on those who are sick right now, Lord. I pray that you continue to keep your loving hand around them as they continue to heal from their sickness, Lord, and overcome the pain that they have to deal with in their recovery, Lord. Give them comfort and give them strength and give them hope through your word and through your healing touch, dear Lord. And I pray for each and every one of the lives and the ears that heard this word, Lord. Bless their spirit. Bless their paths, Lord. And give them and guide them in ways that they need to be guided, Lord, so they can be equipped and be perfected in your word. And I pray these blessings on 
each and every one of your children. I say and ask these things all in your in your your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, everyone. Thank you for joining in with me today. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Amen, everyone. Can we Amen. 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 Beautiful lesson. Thank you. So encouraging. I'm sweating so much. I, there must be. I don't know. <laughs> I was sweating <laughs> down today. I don't know. Listen, yeah. me. Uh, we will uh, not have Bible study next week. Everybody, it's a vacation week for everybody. We're going to take a vacation if, if, if y'all don't mind. Well deserved. <laughs> Yeah, we we'll, we'll, we'll have next week off, and we'll we'll start back the following week. I don't know what to date, but just just one minute off. We'll start back the next Wednesday. Okay. Sounds good. All right, so that's the word. Thank, Thank you so much, Tina. I hope you're feeling better. I know you was a little bit under weather. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm back. I'm back in full force. Back at work and everything. Okay, good deal. Good deal. Thank you for God your God prayers. Uh huh. No problem. <laughs> God is good. God is good. Listen, thanks to everyone and, and, and everybody give kudos to uh there's so many kudos we can give to our Bible study. Everybody, God continues. I pray that God continue to bless each every one of you. I think uh sister um uh, Barnett done sold a million dollar house, I think it looked like uh, <laughs> on her press release. So she's doing good with her sales. Half a million dollar house. <laughs> <laughs> hey, close enough. We're speaking into existence. See, you see that I believe. <laughs> Amen. I tell you, your word tonight was so encouraging to me to believe and keep pushing. Yes, it's God's and what God has put in me yes. to do. Yeah, Lord. don't doubt yourself. Amen. 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 So continue pushing. C congratulations, kudos to you and everyone else. Dr. Lane has been. I think she has left, but I also give her kudos and um, some amazing things has been happening happening through her work in the community community and her ministry so such a blessing for her as she continued to do what God has called her to do to each and every one of you so everybody stay stay focused or be it don't quit you will be all that God called you to be let me close my mouth before I get back preaching everyone have a blessed week have a blessed 4th July above all know that we have been free from sin free from judgment free from death so take it as that is our ultimate independence day on the 4th. So let's celebrate that more so than our freedom because guess what? On July 4th, 1776, all y'all were slaves. <laughs> <laughs> so let's not get it twisted. Let's enjoy our freedom. Our day of Correct. Freedom. <laughs> <laughs> no cap. That's right. <laughs> so be blessed and enjoy it and understand what we're celebrating. All right. I'll miss y'all next Wednesday, but I think it's needed. And we'll see each other the following week. Everyone have a blessed one. Thank you so much. Yeah. God bless. Uh, we have a couple of birthdays. Uh, I think we'll see them before uh next meeting. So we'll we'll celebrate those birthdays then. All right. Everyone have a blessed one. Thank you. Amen. Good night. Good night. <laughs>